good evening to everyone. I know we are all joining from different parts of the world. And today we have, I'm sure we have a, a super popular person. You know, uh, I keep thinking that we must have invited like a president or someone really uh, very popular because uh, I see that so many people have joined and I know that it's because you must really, really like him and he's someone special. And so I think I won't waste too much time doing introduction to letting you know that his name is Jama Gale. I hope I pronounced it correctly. He's going to do for us uh, Power BI toy store analysis. So I think it's like a demo of from start to end how you carry out the Power BI analysis. At the end, we get the opportunity to ask him questions, but I will say you can put your questions in the chat box so that when it's towards, when it's at the end, we can read them as they have been uh, asked. That way, your question maybe might be read first, you know. But still, if you want to raise your hand and we make you able to speak, that's also possible. So he, now I know why he's very popular. Uh, he also was a very big community, so uh, all about data, and then um, you know he's a very lucky person. He was able to. I hope you made money from the sale. <laughs> so it's been acquired and I'm going to share his details, his link, both his personal link and his LinkedIn link so that you can connect with him. I'm also going to instantly do that. And uh, I am happy to say that we have a special person. And uh, this session is being brought to you by your BZ. So just to let you know, we are a training company. We are also into consultancy and more importantly, these are one of the things we do to ensure that people grow, learn. So if we do this even for people who are not paying for our training, imagine how much more we do for people who come for our training because the truth is what the learning happens outside the class. So we go all the miles. We don't just do two days, three days and let you be on your own. We keep supporting you to become a master. So I'm going to shift the focus back to our main guest and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to specially call upon Jama to, to do his magic. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Jama, the stage is yours. Okay. Awesome. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Michael. And yep, you did say my name, right? Uh, so good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, if you are from the States where I am. Um, so today's presentation, I'll be presenting a project that I did in Power BI. Uh, in my day-to-day, -day, I actually use Tableau, but uh, as a student, I learned both Power BI and Tableau. I'm still a student, but I did want to take this opportunity to uh, present a project I did in Power BI that I feel like was one of my best projects. It was a project it was my first project that I didn't use a tutorial for, um, but I kind of just downloaded a public data set from Maven Analytics and kind of did some research to gather some of the KPIs and metrics you see here. Um, and uh, the things that I didn't remember, I just Googled how to do it, like how to do DAX functions, which is how you'll get uh, these KPIs here, how you get the aggregations. Um, and I'll show basically how I got these. Uh, the year over year, this was also a, um, a DAX function as well. So I'll be presenting basically this, this dashboard here that I, I created. Uh, you guys can see my screen, right? Just making sure. All right, so so Power BI and Excel have some similarities as far as the fact that you use Power Query to do a lot of your data transformation, data cleaning, and so forth. So uh, this is the the data set I had, which I had multiple tables. The only tables that wasn't included was these two. So I'll show you guys the uh, raw files here. So these are the raw Excel uh, workbook files here. So just the inventory products, sales and stores. Uh, I was able to 
load that into Power BI. So to load in a new data set, you would just go right here where it says new sources. And maybe I should, let's see. Let me see if I can start this from scratch to kind of show you guys how Power BI, how you can load Power BI in. One second. Let me close this. I don't want to close it completely. All right. This is how it would look. Uh, when you're first opening it up, you can just click on get data. And these are the different ways that you can bring in uh, files. So you can do a CSV file or you can do an Excel workbook uh, to bring it in. And let me bring one in so I can see. Get data, let's do CSV. So I'll bring in this one, for example. When you're loading it in, this is how it'll come up. It'll basically give you a preview of the the files that you are already, uh, or it will give you a preview of the, the tables and everything that's in the Excel sheet. Uh, and then you have the option to either load it into the Power Query or to transform it. So in a sample like this, when I was doing it, I already seen that it needed to be transformed. Uh, due to the fact that... Oh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I'm sure you're in Power Query, right? We are not seeing that. What are you seeing? We're seeing the Power BI desktop, Marvin Toys, $14.44 million. We're seeing that already done report dashboard sheet. Oh, um, so you're not seeing this uh, sales.cb yeah. file? No. So I think maybe you might need to stop sharing and then share again. But when you share again, you pick him. What's yeah, that okay. option? I think it's the entire screen or there's one that shows your entire screen that's the one yeah. that can show everywhere okay i got you all right so let me do this again yeah, yeah, yeah. now we see it all right so let <laughs> me do that again power, let me do that again so you can make sure so um when you, when you first bring up power bi it's not going to look exactly like this but it, it'll give you these options right so um Again, we want to bring in the CSV file, so I'm not sure if that showed in the last one, so I'll just show it again. These were the raw files that I downloaded, the raw data sets that I downloaded. All right, so it's uh, four different tables, and this, this data source, they provide a data dictionary, which is good to be able to explain what the columns mean and everything to that nature. It's, it's quite useful, um, and I, I did use it for this project to under, make sure I understood what each column was about. Um, so once you pull up Power BI, it'll ask you to get the data source uh, or get the data. And there's multiple different ways that you could bring the data in from Excel workbook to CSV file. Uh, you can do some web scraping and uh, SQL, SQL, ser uh, SQL Server database and so forth. So in my case, if they were CSV files. So I already have these loaded in, but I'm just kind of showing you guys how I got it loaded in and so forth. So uh, I would do the sales, for example. When you when I bring in the sales, you'll see that it will load here. So this is what I explained earlier, where it shows you how the data set will come up. Now in Excel, this would be the column file, right? Uh, let, me sh let me actually show that in Excel. And if it doesn't show up on my screen, you guys could let me know. But I think we should be good now. Just waiting for it to load here. All right, so this is the Excel file. 
and I'll just make this bold. No, let's really see. All right, so we see this here. We see the cell ID date, everything is here. So it's basically shown what's in the Excel file, but in the Excel file, uh, these are the, the column headers, right? So the goal is to, um, well, we know we need to transform this data because right now it's showing sales ID as uh, a data within the row versus uh, the, being the head of the table. So let me close this. I don't know why it's going slow like that. All right, so in this sense, when I brought this in, um, I did the transformation process. So I would click on transform data. Now, if it was perfectly fine, you can just load it in. Also, you can always just load it in and come back and transform the data later as well. But if you look at this, you can already see that it needs to be transformed. Right here, it lets you know um, that this is just based on the first 200 rows, which I think this data set was like 800,000 rows in total. All right, so loaded into uh, Power Query, which again, like I said, this is kind of similar to Excel. You can do a lot of the same things in Excel. All right, so uh, I had this is something I had to do for pretty much all of the data sources. So when I'm bringing them in, uh, looking at this, I see that again, these are not actually the column names, but they're just considered uh, data that's within the row within the rows of data versus being the column name. So it's quite simple of how we would get these from here to here. In the Power Query, right, you would just go right here where it says use first rows as header. And then that would bring it up now to make it a, uh, make it the column header title, which this is important when it comes to doing the data modeling and making sure all your tables link. So see right here, it says sales too, because I already have sales here. But um, again, just to kind of show you the process. And then right here, we see the data type, right? So uh, this is all part of the data transformation, data cleaning process. Um, so we, in order for the data to show up correctly, to be able to do the aggregate functions and everything like that, when it comes to DAX, to get, um, let's see, I won't, to get these options that we see here, we have to make sure that these data types are set correctly. So you just cl click here and you're able to change uh, the data based, the data type based on what it is. So in this sense, it would be a whole number, all right? Uh, then it would be the same here. This would be a date. Uh, same here, this would be a whole number. This would be a whole number. You can also use decimal number two as long as it's as long as the data so data type is shown as number, uh, it'll essentially do the same thing, and you can change it to currency and so forth if we needed to. Which in this table we didn't need to, but in the I believe in the products table I did. So uh, yeah, see right here in the products where it says product cost, um, I just changed that to a currency data type because this was dealing with costs and. Uh, the product price and the profit. All right, so again, you can just click here and then you can put fixed decimal. And then of course, these right here are words so they can stay, they're, they're names and titles so they can stay, uh, which one is it? I don't see it on here, but they would basically stay the, oh, right here, text. They would just stay text. This right here, again, this was just a whole number. So this was basically the data transformation, like I said, that I was doing for pretty much all of them. Pretty much most of them, the headers came here. And I had to, again, go right here to where it says use first row as headers and just put it up. Uh, I'll explain what this column is later. I'll also explain why I did this later as well. I'm going to delete this because we don't actually need it. All right, so that was the first step in my process. Now I'm going to close this out. And like I said, I'll get back and explain these two later. I'm just kind of going through the process of what I was doing as I was actually putting the project together.
All right, so once you have all of those things together, now you need the data to kind of talk to each other, basically. You need the data, you need the data to connect with each other in order for it to work. So this is uh, what we call data modeling, right? Um, basically what data modeling is, these are these are the, what is it called? These are the uh, data sets that we just seen that we loaded in into Power Query and did the transformation. So sales, stores, inventory, and products. These data sources have to be able to talk to each other in order for your calculations here to be correct. Because if if they're not connected to each other correctly, then you won't you won't get right numbers, and then essentially you'll be given wrong insights or or wrong uh, wrong recommendations and so forth. Right. So uh, going back to it here. So how do we connect them? Quite simple. Let me just remove this. Delete relation. All right, so in order for sales to connect to store, it's almost like you're doing a join in, in uh, SQL in a sense. If you know SQL, that's kind of how I think about it when I'm doing these, right? So they have to have a common uh, primary key or foreign key that you can connect to, right? So in this case, um, we see that they have store, we have store ID here and we also have store ID here. So all you do is you just, Sorry, D. Just connect it there and Power BI automatically does it. All right. So like you just drag it and connect it to the match. Same thing here. So if we look here, I don't want to do that one yet. Uh, we look here, the sales is talking to the products table through the product ID. The products table is connected to the inventory table through the product ID as well. And uh, all of these tables end up connecting to this uh, sales and products uh, uh, table. Uh, so right now, everything is able to connect. And uh, I'll explain what this measures is uh, later. This doesn't necessarily have to connect, though. All right. so. Um, now, in my analysis here, one thing I did and one thing that I learned that to be important on my journey and even now being a professional in the field is being able to identify what metrics actually matter to a stakeholder or to a client or to you know whoever you're working with, your manager or so forth. Uh, so being able to understand the KPIs and metrics in your industry. So when I was putting this together, when I first got the data set, I was like, okay, my mind went blank. I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't even know where to start. Then I started to kind of dive into KPIs and metrics and said, okay, what would a toy store manager possibly care about? You know, And being that this is fictitious, it's a fictitious data, fictitious store, I kind of just made the story up on my own, but I Googled some possible metrics and kind of took some uh, out of the course that I've, watched on YouTube, which uh, if someone reminds me, I'll share the YouTube link to that course at the end of how you can learn more about KPIs and metrics. So these are considered KPIs, right? These are the, these are the aggregate functions that kind of pops out. It's the numbers that the stakeholder or the ideal client automatically sees. So from here, we can see that our total sales in, uh, 2017 was this much, right? Um, our average sales, our total product sales, our product count and everything like that. So how do you actually get these numbers, right? Because we see the data here. Uh, I could go here and jump. No, doesn't show. Oh, sales. So we see the, we see the, we see the data here as far as product cost, product price, everything to that nature, right? Now in Excel, you can do uh, equal sum and you know at the bottom create a new create a new row and get the total of what this is. But how do we do it in Power BI? Is what I'll show you next. So these total sales here is coming from this, right? 
this is where the measures table comes in at that I told you I would show you guys later. The totals, let's see which one is this. Okay, so 2017 total sales, right? So this is uh, what you call a DAX function. Now I'm not, a, I'm not an expert at DAX, right? But you can Google, if you know there's something that you need, you can just Google what it is. And that's, that's basically what I was doing through this, through this whole project. Cause like I said, this was my first project I did no tutorial, no help, no anything. So I knew I wanted to get the total sales for 2017, right? Um, and you name it here just so you know what it is because you know after you create a whole bunch of measures, if you don't name it, you can forget. But this is actually the DAX function here. So all I did was, let me see if I can just create a measure similar. Let's see, one second. Let me show you guys how I did this here. Cancel. Let's create new measure. All right. There's a tough one. This one to be the file for later. All right, so here's the new measure, right? I'll just call this 2017 test. You really can call it whatever you want. Um, and then I use the sum function, right? And it automatically shows you the tables here uh, that, that you can do the calculations on. Uh, now I merged the queries of, I think I merged store and let's see. Oh, here it is. Oh, sales. Okay. I've made, I put sales and I think I used, let me see which one I used again. Yeah, I did revenue per sale. So sales. I did revenue per sale. And that's how I basically got this this uh this number here by doing sales and the revenue per sale. So let's go look at what this revenue per sale is. Cause that's that was not actually in the data set. This was a column that I had to create myself doing a different function to be able to get the total um of to be able to get this total sales here so but this is how you create the measure and this is why in the, da the data model this wasn't connected to anything because this is its own separate uh column you can say that uh you use to just aggregate and get these functions here now how do you actually create that table i should have showed this first but you just i mean not table column i'm sorry you just go here. One thing about Power BI, it likes to load very slow. So bear with me here. But uh, you just go to enter data here. And you can just call it measures or aggregations or whatever you uh, prefer to call it. And you know, you just put load and it'll create this right here that I have. It won't create these. These are the calculations you create yourself, but it'll create this column where you can have everything stored. All right, and then once you have everything stored, you'll be able to use it here in the filters or also uh, in the field columns that you need to get it uh, to get this here. But uh, let me show you the so from here, you can always get to the edit. You can always get back to Power Query just by uh, left cl right clicking and then you click Edit Query and it'll automatically bring you back up to Power Query. All right, so sales and product. These were, uh, I merged sales and product to kind of simplify and just end up working with one table. Um, instead of doing this. So how I did that was, let's 
see, I believe I did merge query. I either did merge query or append. I think I did merge though. Uh, and this again, kind of works like uh, join in tables in SQL. So yeah, I think I did merge. No, uh, append, I had to do append then. Okay, append two tables, yeah. So I did sales and product. All right, so yeah, I did sales and product here. I don't want to do it again, but now let's see, maybe I can, I probably can just delete it. I didn't do it. One second. I'm going to rise from two tables. Wait, what did I do? One second. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have product ID. All right. So, yeah, then I have to do merge products with sales. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Sorry. So, uh, I was able to merge these two based on the product ID. All right. Uh, I believe I did a full just to include everything from both. But these is basically this is basically how you do it. So it's almost like the what we did in the data modeling, but in this sense, it's merging the two tables together. Of course, you don't have to do full outer. It just depends on what your goal is. But I really was just trying to get to um, a certain measurement, and I believe I just did full outer. Um, so this is how I ended up merging it. Merged those two together and got the then created this new table sales and products to include everything in one and uh, added in the profit margin here let's see if i can get to what this calculation was let's see if i remember how to do it One second. It's been a little while since I worked in Power BI. One second here. Gotta remember how I got to that. Calculate days of the week. That's not the one I want, though. Calculate spam products when I reach my site. Oh, I don't think I did it in this one. No, it's right here. Okay, here it is. So this is how I got the the profits column. I did um I think it's with the profits column. I created a custom field, which you just go right here to, I'm sorry, custom column. You just go right here to add column. I'll, I'll do that. You go to add column, and then you can just do custom column. It'll ask you to insert. And then here you can do a different calculation, which I think in my case, I did product price versus product cost, I mean, um, minus product cost. So it kind of works like how it did in the uh, the dashboard where it, it automatically brings up the tables for you. So for us, it's gonna be product cost minus product price. 
and then you can call it i'll just say profit too because i have one already and we can do that and then we just put just put okay and then it comes up right here right i don't know why it changed this name make sure i put that back so i don't forget all right so it'll um it'll automatically come up here and these will be the the calculations for uh the profit and so i'll remove this column because i don't actually need it all right so the profit was what i used in uh, i broke something Shoot. I don't know what I broke. Go to there. Uh, so that's how I got the profit margin here. Profit margin was, let me see which one that was. Profit margin. Yeah, I did so much stuff here that I don't remember where that one actually was. But in any case, I think what I did, I think the calculation I did for this was sale minus profit, I think it was. Uh, but regardless, basically what you do is you create this um, custom field and you can add in the calculations that you need here so that when you go do the DAX functions in the uh, dashboard, your, you know, your calculations are adding up. So that's how I got the, which one was it? Let me close this out. Just closed on the fly. That's how I got discard changes. Discard. There. That's how I got this uh, revenue per sale, All right? And I just summed it, it was all in the table. Uh, and that's how we get this total here. Um, then for the year over year, this was also a DAX function. Uh, this wasn't a DAX function. So this was actually a filter. So right here uh, is where the data go, right? So you have the, um, the X axis, uh, which is the, uh, the product name. And to get the top three products, we go right here into the filter. Uh, in the filter, you have the product name. Then you can filter by different ways. So you can filter, you can click advanced filter, base fil basic filter, or top end. Top end would just basically mean if you want to get a specific top, top number, which in this case, I wanted to get the top three. Uh, by value, so I was basing the top three products based off of the total sales. Uh, it's, it goes right here in the by value section. And then you can put the, um, I think it's in the, right here, you can put the, the numbers. So you can put top five, top 10, whichever one it is, uh, and then they'll just automatically do it here. Let me see if I, 
I failed to. I just changed it to top five, and you see that now it changes from three to five, right? And then you would just update the name if you wanted to change the name. Um, so this is actually the uh, dashboard section, right? Um, but before you get to the dashboard, you can create all of these separately in the reports. But right now, my reports are going to look ugly because of a lot of resizing that I did in the dashboard. And it, when you resize it on the dashboard, it resizes it, resizes it on the reports as well. Um, but uh, these right here are the different options that you can use to create. So for example, these what I use for the KPI is uh, right here, this KPI card. It's not loading. There we go. Uh, so it loads here. You can resize it, anything you want here. And in order to get everything in, right, right here in the field section uh, is where you would choose what you want to do. So for example, let's see, you can do fields, and then it shows it right there. It automatically pops up the, the minute you drop it in. All right, or if you want to do average set, whichever one you want to do, it'll automatically po populate as you put it here. Um, all right, so that's that. Uh, then you can also do different bar charts. So this bar chart here is, is this one. Let me to do that. Yeah, OK, so this bar chart is this one right here. Um, but you can also do this, this, this. You can do a table, um, no, a heat map, I'm sorry. You can do a pie, a pie chart, which that wouldn't be the best for something like this, right? <laughs> you could do a table. Um, let's see. You can do a line, a line chart. But I'll just put this back to a line chart actually probably would even be better for something like this. Uh, but for some reason, I just decided to go with the bar chart for no particular reason. Um, but so that's how you do that. Um, uh, for these right here, similar to what I said with the top end, um, you can put the, the store location if you want that to pop up like I had pop up right here. Where did I use this? I don't think I used that at all. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, so right here where I'm showing like the top toys, it works for the same as the top end. Like if you want the top three products, this works the same, right? Uh, where you're able to put in the top. It's all based on the, the value that you're doing it by. So the total sales, right? I'm getting the top. I'm getting the top one product based on how many sales was generated, right? Um, so it's still top end, but because it's not an aggregation and it's a text, it'll show whatever category has the, the, the most sales. And of course, whatever data set you're doing, it's going to show you know, whatever the top category is. Um, and then for lowest category, you do the same thing, but instead of, uh, instead of top right here where it says show items, Instead of top, you'll show bottom. So now it's going to show the least. And you know, same thing for for these products here. It does the same. Same for cities. Um, and these, this can also be a bar. You could have did bar. I could have did bar charts for these as well, right? But again, it's just uh, just for the sake of making it easier for the end user to see. Okay, I already know my top category is toys. My lowest category is in sports and outdoors. My top product is in Lego bricks, lowest product, and so forth. Um, and then you have your best selling days and the top cities, right? And again, all the same thing. Top and put five based on the value, which is based on the sales. And it shows it here. Uh, if I did bottom, then you would see that this switches. I have to apply filter first for it to change. 
uh, you even see the name of the city switches because now it's going to the bottom of the list of who's generating uh, the least amount. So I'll put that back to top, cities change. So what is this information even good for, for an end user? So something like this can identify, okay, these are our top five cities. You know, we can have sales here. We can do some more advertising here. The marketing team can use something like this for ad campaigns, right? So, so this something like this can be considered in this case, in the case of a, a toy store or anything within e-commerce, something like this will be valuable for the marketing team because they'll know, you know, these are information that I can use to use for ad campaigns and so forth. Uh, best selling days. This is something that could be used for a business process. You know, uh, this is a toy store. So, you know, okay, maybe Monday to Thursday, you know, parents are in school, not, a, not as much people are coming to buy toys. Uh, maybe these days there could be like a special sale or something that, you know, incentivizes people to come out. So different things to, to that nature. Here we see um, uh, based inventory based on location. So. We see that the the place that has the that's generating the most revenue is also the place that has the most inventory. So this lets a this lets a stakeholder or, or your ideal customer know that um, if we increase inventory in these other locations, then we can possibly increase revenue. All right, um, and and so forth. And year over year basically shows you know how you performed in 2017 versus how you performed in 2018. Uh, which that's uh, that's also something that you would create in the measure as well, All right? So I think I pretty much went through everything. Um, once you like I said, once you create all of the reports, then you can bring it over into this dashboard. And I know one thing I always get asked is how do you export it? So you literally, you can export it here. You can export it as a PDF. Um, if you're doing a project that you want to show off, you can export it as a PDF. Um, it'll take forever to generate the report and then you kind of just show what you want it to show. So what I did was, and what I should have did just now was um, actually hide this page because uh, then it would just only generate this dashboard and it'll come up like this where you can uh, basically save this to your computer right and then you can upload something like this on LinkedIn or on your resume and so forth so again this page only showed because I didn't hide it but if I hide this if I hide this pie page then it wouldn't show up uh, it wouldn't show up here. It would just be this, and then you can just save it and go from there. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, there's probably like so much more that could be covered in Power BI because I'm not an expert, but this was the first project I did without um, without any tutorial, just kind of me doing my own research, playing around with DAX, playing around with the different things. And honestly, that's the best way to learn because I'm in my second week now as a professional data analyst. And when I got my project, uh, we work in Tableau. So that's one reason why I haven't been in Power BI as much. But um, when I got my project, I got this data set and I, my mind went blank and I had to basically Google and research. I spent like probably five hours researching before I actually even got to doing the dashboard. And so when you're doing your own project, it'll kind of feel like very similar because you'll get this big data set um which you know you'll be like what am i like you know what 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 insights do i even really want to get out of this um where should i start and you know what what will be valuable right because you don't want to just show vanity metrics you want to show things that actually would stand out and of course you, you don't know based on just looking at the data you have to go research the industry uh, that you're doing so forth. So this is where I get most of my data from. Um, from Maven Maven Analytics. I'll drop this in the in the chat. 
Uh, I know we're running low on time, so I can be open to questions now. What are the difference between Tableau and Power BI? Uh, in my opinion, Tableau runs a whole lot faster. Um, but they're they're pretty much the same for the most part. So what what this right here, what um what tab what Power BI calls DAX functions is actually called calculated fields in Tableau. So I know this is not a Tableau session, but um I'll just pull Tableau up really quick just to show you guys how it looks. Uh, Power BI is, and Power BI and Tableau, they both have free versions that you know you can uh, open um, that you can open up and so forth. So, uh, so like this is one Tableau project that I'm working on, right? And again, right here, these are the calculated fields. So. Uh, I'll just show you this real quick because I know for a long time. Um, so same like how in the Power BI, you can just name it profits or whatever. And then uh, we can do, I'll just do this. So here it's a little different because you start off with something like what you would do in Excel. this, And then we can do, um, I don't have like a full example here. Uh, let's just say, I just want to show you guys that, see what, what what's here will pop up here, just like it did in um, Power BI, right? The only difference is the name. Power BI calls it DAX, Tableau calls it a calculated field, right? So, but I know this is a Power BI session, so I won't steal the show with Tableau. Uh, it seems easier for Tableau users to learn Power BI, but not common easy for Power BI users to learn Tableau. Do you think that's correct? Uh, I think Power BI has a little bit easier to use functions, especially when it comes to creating dashboards. So I do agree. Power, um, if you learn tab if you learn Tableau first, you can definitely learn Power BI because I learned Tableau first, and I learned Excel first, and honestly. Knowing those two kind of already set me up for success with Power BI. So I would agree that, at least in my case, learning Tableau first definitely did help. Uh, but I'm open to more questions. I'm going to go ahead and drop that metrics and KPI video that I told you guys I would do. Okay, uh, Jama. We... Yep. We're not very strict on tools. In fact, if you want to come present to us another time on Tableau, we are very happy. So, <laughs> please feel free to share as much as you intend or you, because you know a lot about this than I think all of us, because uh, you are the first person we are having who has a lot more experience on Tableau than even the Power BI that we are used to. So. Uh, we will be we will be very very happy to hear from you all that you think are the differences, you know. So please feel free, and if you even want to come present to us on Tableau, like a session, live session like this, and it's Tableau, awesome. Like we are very very open to it. Yeah, definitely, I, I will be open to that. Um, I don't have too many personal projects in Tableau, but I I can definitely create one and and be ready to present. Um, if I can only learn one, which should it be, Tableau or Power BI? What are the opportunities like for each? Um, <laughs> that's a bit of a tough question. I would say it depends on your market because um, unless you want to work remotely, honestly, I think there's opportunities for both. Um, like, for example, my company, uh, we have some departments that use Power BI and we have some departments that use Tableau. Which in my case, I'm in the department that uses Tableau. so. Um, but the opportunities are pretty good for both. Honestly, like I said before, if you learn one, you can learn the other probably in a week or two. So I started with Tableau. Um, honestly, okay, this is what I'll say. Learn the basics of both. You can dive deep into one, so you can dive deep into Tableau and learn the basics of Power BI. And, you know, if you get a, if you get a interview, where they use Power BI, then you know just brush up and do a quick project in Power BI. But 
if you just want to focus on one, I would say Tableau and just learn the basics of Power BI when the opportunity arises. So that way you can just be prepared for any scenario because I started out learning Tableau in the Google Data Analytics course. Then there was a job opportunity I thought I was going to get where they requested Power BI. So I ended up learning Power BI, but the job I ended up actually landed wanted Tableau. So in the end, it kind of worked out in my favor to end up learning both, honestly. Uh, how can I set the Y label of a chart to show the exact value instead of rounding off the number? Uh, let's see if I remember that. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I remember how to do that. One second. I'm going to show you guys this in real time, what we do when we don't remember stuff. Uh, what are we doing again? We want to not round numbers, power BI. Let's see, click on the fields pane and change the decimal place to nine under the model. Fields pane. Fields pain. Let's start running. Round the I'm going to click on the columns in the field pain and then change the decimal place. Okay, here we go. Oh, I remember this is not happening right. Mm -hmm. Call out value, display units. Boom, there it goes. All right, I don't know if you see what I just did there. I can redo it though, if you didn't see. Uh, the, the, the person that asked that question, did you see what I just did there? Do we allow audio? I don't know if the person wants to come on and, and speak on it. But this is kind of where it is. I went to the format visual here to, OK, so what I did was I'm just using this one as an example. You can go here to re remove the decimal. Uh, you can also come here to the uh, the callout value and change what it is. In this case, it's millions, but you can right here at the very top, and this is loading slow. But here at the top, you can you can change it right here for it to show the the actual whole number here when you change the decimal place. And it's gonna go out because I I lowered it, but. Uh, this is all it is. It's basically just a decimal here, and then you can change the display unit. So like this is millions, so I changed it to millions here because I don't think it does it automatically for you. So you have to change it to millions here, and then you can change the decimal place right here at the top and where it says format. Where it says format, you come right here, and then you're able to change it. And this is also how you can change it to currency because it doesn't automatically show currency. It'll just show a regular number. Uh, then you just come here and you change it to currency. Uh, I've been made you present Uluabumi, uh, the person who asked the question. So if you want to unmute and and answer, you know, give your feedback if you know you you saw the explanations and followed, you can Uluabumi. Okay. Uh, see, what advice do you have for people today trying to go from zero knowledge to being competent slash hireable data analyst? Uh, focus on one course at a time. Um, that's my honest opinion. That's that's what I would say was game changer for me. Started with I started with SQL. I know some people say start with Excel. I honestly think you can start with either one. Um, but I started with SQL. Then I jumped to Power BI. So after every after every course. 
I download the softwares myself and actually like try to uh, do the projects myself. So for example, right here, I have Postgres on my computer. Um, so I would actually practice, I would like this data set, I think I have this data set loaded in my SQL as well. So in SQL, I would actually load the data in myself. And of course, like if I don't remember how to do it exactly, I would just uh, go look up a YouTube tutorial or something like that and practice the SQL functions myself to actually create, you know, that resume. I mean, that, that portfolio or that project that you're trying to do. So it's better, like, as soon as you finish the course to actually go practice what you learn. Um, and after you take a Power BI course or a Tableau course, challenge yourself to go on YouTube and watch maybe one project where they're actually creating a dashboard, follow along with it. And then after that, challenge yourself to create your own dashboard from scratch, no tutorial. And when you get stuck, like do what I just did and go on Google and you know, you'll be able to find the answer. Um, like how uh, the previous question was asked and I didn't remember how to do it. I went on Google and I was just able to figure it out. So that's, you know, that's kind of how it's gonna be in the actual workforce as well. You're not gonna remember everything. So um, it's, it's good, to, good to definitely learn how to Google the questions that you have as well. Cause that's how it's gonna be in the real world, honestly. Um, yeah, I don't have it. this is basically the SQL database that I use. I I have to fix something with the server, which I know we don't have time for right now. But yeah, that's kind of how I do it is after I learn everything, I kind of go and create a project on it. As far as being hireable, uh, you can start with the projects, but there's probably a whole bunch more details on that. Like that could be a whole video, whole discussion within itself. But that would be my short term is create projects that you can present. Um, how do I get Power BI to automate dates and create dashboards when new data is inputted? Honestly, I haven't been in a real time work environment to know how to do that. So I'm not too sure. Um, what do you think about the new hype around AI generated dashboards? Should we ignore AI? If no, how do we handle it in our space? Honestly, I ignore every prediction made about tech because when I first got into tech in 2018, there was a lot of predictions that was kind of null and void. Uh, there's still a lot of people hiring for you to generate dashboards. I just got my job. I started January 9th and they have me manually creating the dashboard. So for right now, I would say that you're good. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. I would just focus on what's the reality now, which is there is a whole lot of jobs where they need the Tableau and Power BI developers. So uh, I think I got all the questions. We would like to hear about your personal experience going from newbie to data analysis and BI specialist. Um, so I started in, I started with the Google data analytics course, August of 2021. I started my all about the data community in November of 2021. Uh, so the Google Data Analytics course took me about five months. Um, and after that, I started applying for jobs and got a whole bunch of rejection letters and kind of came to the conclusion at that time that I actually wasn't ready. So this was around January 2022. Between January 2022 and March is when I was applying for jobs in this sector, and I was not able to land one. Um, and kind of got busy with community work. Deal, dealing with stuff with all about data, our Discord channel, and trying to host a lot of events and things like that. So that kind of slowed my journey down, but I restarted my journey in August of 2022 and did the new approach that I just mentioned earlier of taking every course one by one because after taking the Google Data Analytics course, I did not feel like I was job ready. There's some people that do, but in my case, I didn't feel job ready. I kind of felt like some of the things were kind of rushed over some of the topics they discussed. So the Udemy course that I took, um, which I have this in my article called How to Become, How I Became a Data Analyst. You can see it on my LinkedIn and my Twitter. Uh, what I did was I more so focused on learning the concepts versus trying to just get the certificate of completion. Because I know, you know, we all want the certificate of completion to say we're certified, but honestly, no interview that I've ever done, and I've probably done over 30, none of them have ever asked me about my certification or if I was certified. They more so asked about my experience. 
So this, my second approach, I did not worry about getting a certificate. I'm more so worried about getting the experience, make sure I understood the concepts, make sure I tried it out for myself, uh, created a story around my experience that I generated myself and used this story in my interviews. And, um, you know, uh, did about 20 interviews or so with a whole bunch of technical assessments, which uh, can be annoying and stressful and draining. Um, but eventually ended up landing my role that I started in January or this month. It's a very relatable and practical answer you've given us. So, uh, and congrats, uh, because actually this month is this month, January is this month. So that's a, yeah. that's a big congratulations on that. Uh, so I, I, I took some key things from what you said which are, I think maybe if I will mention the one that I want to emphasize a lot more is how you 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 create projects for yourself. I know you didn't say it this way, but that's the way I interpreted it as something I can tell myself when I'm learning something new and also tell people who I know they keep uh, battling with that question of how do I go from zero to getting my first job or getting a job that requires a skill I didn't know something about before. So from the answer you gave, you prioritized, though you did the certification, so I think it's still good, but you said no one has ever asked about the certification from you. What has actually been the main thing is what have you done? And so you always were creating projects to do, to have a story around and and be able to make point to things yeah. that you've done. So uh, yeah. I hope we are all listening. Honestly, and, and, and honestly, um, honestly, no one has ever asked me about a degree, neither. I don't have a degree, just to be fully transparent with that. And I've never been asked about it in the interview as well. So, uh, you know, I would say if you have the projects, apply anyway, like ignore the five years experience, ignore the, ignore the bachelor degree, ignore all of that and just go in there and say, this is what I have. And, you know, they'll either take you or, you or they won't. But if you go in there confident and, you know, again, the importance of doing your own projects is it's going to make you, it's going to force you to think like a data analyst because it's easy to follow a tutorial when you're in the class, like click here and do this. Like, you know, if I, if I, at the end of this video, if it was a little more detailed, you'd be able to mi basically mimic what I did just by following the tutorial, right? But that doesn't put you in the place for you to actually think for yourself and for you to do research and things like that. So the tutorial is fine because it'll kind of show you how to show you your way around the software where everything is, but it's a completely different ball game when you go download an Excel file and you load it in here and you're like, what do I do? And that right there is what's going to give you the experience. Is when you ask, what do I do? Now you're going to step into gaining experience because no one's holding your hands and that's the best way to do it. So. Thank you very much. I know past the hour and uh... I think all the questions have been asked. So at this juncture, it's for me to once again say a very big thank you for making this session for the privilege we classify, we categorize as a privilege to have you. And I also think you, I'm sure there's something you've done that made us got a lot of people sign up for your yep. session. So I will say thank you, whatever it is you did, that we get more than the usual kind of people come for your session. It's I don't think it's all of what we've done, because if it's all of what we've done, we don't get this typical amount uh, of sign up. And so thank you very much. And to everybody who has come, who stayed through to the end, and those who maybe dropped off at one point and joined again, uh, thank you very much. And one last thing, I know someone has asked, okay, two, two more things. Someone has asked, asked about the resource, and I know you shared the link where they can download it. So maybe I'll just repost it in case they were not paying attention when you mentioned uh, you, you I can it's that Mervin Analytics Playground link. And so I'm requesting it. I hope it's the yeah. right one to share for them. That's one. Uh, I'll, what I'll do is I just shared my full blog that has all the resources from courses I took to where I get my data set and everything. So I just shared that link in there. That's the one I was trying to send. Okay, great. So for those who asked about the resource. This is the the link you just shared is where you get all the resources.
just none of right to the downloads there for the yep. resources. And then someone asked now about recording. Yes, the yep. the session is being recorded yep. done by usually Monday, but the team that does the the putting up of the video, they are they are on a training, they travel. But I'm thinking they will still be able to do it tomorrow, but I know not later than Tuesday to be helped. The record the special. So I think those are the two other things I know so far. Um, so thank you to everyone yeah. and special thank you to Jama for the honor and the very deep. And I also like how you. <laughs> so you maybe you didn't you might not have considered it, but for me and a lot of people that I know I relate with. We enjoy it when someone speaks to us and at a level that we can relate to it in a way I can see immediate steps I can take to begin to be like that person to do what is done. And I like that approach you've used with us today. You've been very open to us to tell us that we can take you make use of easily available resources like Google. We can uh, begin to take immediate steps rather than trying to create boundaries for ourselves in achieving this old mastery and being in job and and learning things. So I very much thank you for that. I want to especially mention you that it's something that um, I like. I I'm, I'm, I learned a few things from from I mean not just learn, but I'm beginning to structure some things I'm doing to follow that path and create a personal project for myself. Use that to learn that skill rather than waiting to uh, someone gives me a job or just doing one guided course of one another. So thank you very much. And I hope everybody paid attention to that aspect of your advice. So I'm going to bring this section to a close now. And um, thank you to everyone once again. Have a wonderful week ahead. And uh, thank you to our special guests again. So bye to everyone. Bye bye.